What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it. And the word is spreading. We just hit more than 9 million views. So thank you for getting us this far. Congratulations. Today, thank you. Thank you. Now, today we have the honor and privilege of being joined by Volume 10 again. Thank you for coming through, sir. Peace. Yes. Now, Volume 10 is uh, getting his dreads cut off. And that is what we're doing for this interview. So, Volume 10, why are we doing an interview while your dreads are getting cut off? Well, Soren, I'm glad you asked. What? Why, why are you asking me, talking to me while I'm doing this interview? Anyway, I'm glad that you asked that, Soren, because the reason is that one of your fans, I don't know his name, uh, on one of the posts from the last interview, he he said, uh, he wrote, wow, that guy looks bad. And I thought, that kid, right? <laughs> Uh, if you guys look, you could probably find the kid who said it. Whoever he is, tell him that Volume really appreciates his honesty. And because now I have to cut my dreads off. So there you go. Well, now we know. <laughs> and there we have it. <laughs> so we, ho we hope he sees this. And then we I hope... Do. And then we hope that after he sees it, he uh, comments on your new look. So we'll find I, out. I, I wish he would. We'll that would find be out. really dope. That would be really, really dope. We should call him in. If we ever interview again, we'll call him and, and discuss it. Yes. So now as you're getting your dreads cut off. And so wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me say, these are my COVID dreads. Okay. I got them because of COVID. I told myself I wasn't going to cut my hair until COVID was over. COVID may never end. So here goes the dreads. Okay, sorry. Your turn. Yes. And <laughs> this is also uh, somewhat symbolic because of the new project you have. The volume 10 is Dean Hawkins. So yeah, right. we, have, we have a new mu musical emergence and we have a new aesthetic emergence happening at around the same time. Beautiful, beautiful. One is one is the is the the result of the other. So break that down. What do you mean? Well, the reason why we're having the research this is because of that, because of the music, because of the album. So you know it's hard to go around singing <laughs> when when you look like a caveman. So there you go. Well, ironically, the first song is uh, Locked Away, a.k.a. Getaway Car. So there you go. You've been locked away. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Uh-oh, uh -oh. here goes the first dread. Here goes the first dread. Oh, my goodness. Ouch. <laughs> hey, it took two years plus to grow these things, bro. I don't know. I'm actually, my heart is kind of beating fast or something. Like I'm losing a, something very special. We're going to save them. <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to save the hair? Yeah, she is. And you can reattach them, but it'll be much neater. Okay. So she, she says I can reattach them later, but this time it's going to be much, you know, neater. I'm not going to look like a homeless man and maybe the kid won't say that again. I don't know. Time will tell. We shall see. <laughs> now, have you ever had a haircut of this magnitude? No. This is well, I had a big giant fro at one time that I went and and uh you know went ball for. I mean bald after. But no, I think this is probably probably the biggest thing that ever happened to my hair. You know what I mean? And it's funny because I actually have like curly hair. So it's really hard to dread it. You know what I mean? It's thin and curly. And so the only way that it would dread is if I just left it alone. And it's that Creek Indian he has in. Oh, she's telling my business. So yeah, I'm Creek. We, we are Creek Indian uh, partially in our family. So we got that good hair stuff or whatever they say it is good hair or whatever. But yeah, it doesn't dread well. And so like it has to actually mat. It doesn't dread. My hair doesn't dread, it mats. And then it dreads. 
So it looks a little bit messy. I, I, I liked it. I thought it was some caveman. You know, it's mountain man dreads, basically. You know what I mean? Which is how you're supposed to really do it. But I got so much flack from this person here. Uh, I hated it. Oh, my God. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> if this mom can see this, she'll be turning over. Oh, my God, please. <laughs> he said my mom would be turning in her grave if she, was, uh, if she saw this hair. Why is that? So, well, you... Don't support this. You've never seen me like this, you know. What I mean, I've never been unkept. I'm all, I've always been clean, uh, shaving, and and my hair looking curly or natural or you know, uh, bald. You know what I mean? Or fade cut. And uh, so it's 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 uh, it was really kind of uh, a shocker for my family to see me like that. They thought something was wrong. You know what I mean? It's like, wait a minute, something's wrong. He's on drugs. He's going nuts. He's doing something. And it's like, no, nah, I'm not doing any of that. You know, I just got to the point where I didn't want to go. I was so afraid of COVID that I didn't want to go get my hair cut, you know? And that's basically what happened. So now y'all about to get the smooth operator. She's going to shave me too, uh, hopefully today. You going to shave me? Yeah. She don't want to because she... I was going to say zoom out for a second just so we can see where we're look what we're looking at. Wow, that's a big difference already. Wow. No, I was saying to your head so we could see the. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a big difference yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a bum. I just look like it, and I'm and I'm tired of looking like it. So it's over. <laughs> so Soren, I wanted to tell you, the last time that we had an interview. I was a little bit slow and lethargic. And me and my wife was talking about it after we interviewed. We were like, you know, you need to stop 420 in before your interviews, bro. <laughs> and I must admit, after looking at the interview, I had just 420 right before the interview, bro. And I told her, look, I ain't going to do that again. I don't know if you can tell I'm a little bit sharper today. <laughs> so I, I 420 about 45 minutes ago, which has left me with a good attitude and, and most of my mentality, most of my mental fortitude. So it should be a great interview now. Yes. Well, we're, we're off to a great start. So thank you All for right. that. All right. But, but on uh, volume 10 is Dean Hawkins. I have three songs that are my favorites daughters okay. happy today and the truth okay um so daughters i really liked uh because of kind of the well one as we get into volume 10 as dean hawkins i wanted before we even get to the songs this is a very for people that know you in some ways it could surprise them but i also think it's somewhat of a natural progression because musically You've always had, I would say, the singing, the opera, the different things you've had since the beginning of your career. And this is just a more, uh, I guess, extreme version of that. But why do you think now is when this volume 10 is Dean Hawkins is coming as opposed to doing it earlier in your career? Well, you know, I'm an old person now. I don't really want to say how old I am, but if you look at this gray here, <laughs> you can tell that I'm aging and maturing and maturing is part of it. Uh, when I was younger, I was a little bit of a hothead. And so that's how the music came out. You know, at this age, I'm old enough to be someone's grandfather. And I just feel like the topics that I'm using on this album, uh, you know, are, are, are correct with my age. You know what I mean? I don't want to talk about juvenile stuff anymore. I want to do grown people music now, which is one of the reasons why I started singing. Because with rapping, it's hard to get a full expression across uh, sometimes when you, when you want to talk about feelings and syrupy stuff like your relationship with your daughter. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of hard to do it uh, as a hip hopper, you know what I mean? But as a singer, I can set a, a more a correct tone for some of the stuff that I want to talk about, you know what I mean? Uh, but 
I want you guys to re remember and keep in mind, it's it's volume 10 as Dean Hawkins is the name of the album. Uh, I'm Dean Hawkins and it, I'm not volume 10. When you go to pick up a volume 10 album, you will hear the same volume 10 or hopefully better, but in the same vein that you've always heard him, which was, you know, which is hardcore hip hop. Um, and, but I want to create this other tone uh, that I didn't think I could get to um, with rap. And so uh, my, 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 my maturity level, uh, I wanna talk about positive things mainly now. Uh, well, that's not true. I want to be able to express my positive side, uh, uh, you know, whereas I felt like I was held back from that with volume 10, you know what I mean? With the hardcore hip hop and everybody expecting to hear Pistol Grip Pump or something close to it. Um, you know, I'm just gonna do both, you know? And on top of that, I always wanted to be a rock star. You know what I mean? I always wanted to have that type of, I think like, I don't know if I said this uh, last interview, but I think all rappers want to be rock stars. All rock stars want to be rappers. And so it was just time. It's like, look, I'm at that age where, you know, crooning <laughs> could be um, accepted, I think, by people, by fans, and uh, where, and, and by myself. Because as a young person, I definitely wasn't trying to be no singer and put on no suit and tie suit and tie are you kidding me that this wasn't me but now we're on some new stuff yeah as we see with your hair getting cut yes now one of my favorites on on uh volume 10 is dean hawkins's daughters and the one of the sets of lyrics that struck me the most was when you said i wish i could save you i wish you could save me so right. what what was the inspiration and what was happening that made you write that well, you know, Soren, sometimes things are way too deep to really talk about. <laughs> Some things are really personal. And I would like to keep that to myself <laughs> exact, about exactly what I was talking about. Hold on for a minute. But repeat, repeat the line. Oh, I, wish, I, wish I, I wish I could save you. I wish you could save me. Um, or I wish I could free you. I wish you could free me. Is okay. Action. You know, mental health is is a sum a sum of a right, and with me, you know, I guess that's what I wish she could free me from. You know the the issues uh, that come up in in life that cause you to have uh, mental angst, you know what I mean? Um, mental issues, um, you know, I wish she could save me from all that. You know what I mean? I wish she could free me from that, from the pain of, uh, of life, you know what I mean? Um, and I wish I, could, I, I wish I could free her from, from the mistakes that I made and the things that she was upset at me about. You know what I mean? Um, which is the reason for the song is really being uh, apologizing um, for the things that she felt were, were uh, that I had wronged her. You know what I mean? And, you know, I will tell parents, sometimes it just doesn't matter what you do. Uh, the kids are going to complain about it. <laughs> right. But I will say with her, you know, I, there was, there were certain things and the, and the, I, I guess the song explains it, you know, uh, being poor, uh, well, you know, I fell off in the rap game and, and I was poor and I didn't have a lot of money to give to them. And she was really upset about that. And, um, you know, one of the things that happened from that was that she got off her butt as soon as she was able, before she turned 18, I think, and started her own business. Uh, started cutting hair. Uh, her name is Sugar Hawkins, uh, and she's actually cut Cardi B's hair. Um, that's one of my daughters, and then there's another daughter. Her name is Valencia Hawkins, 
Um, you know, there, there's there's just some things that that they wish, like you know, partying, being a rock star, partying, you know, that type stuff, man. They just they're upset at me about it. But my answer to that is, this is that was then, and this is now, and I ain't the same guy now. And I, 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 I'm sorry, and I hope you forgive me. And I wish that we had a better relationship, and I'm down for uh, working on it. If you, if you are, well, I think that that's part of what oh, Sugar's it, doing. Sugar is actually doing nails, not hair. <laughs> she did Cardi B's nails, right? Okay, sorry. But I think that's what made this song resonate with me so much was the the apologetic aspect of it because no one's perfect, even though even on our best day, we're not perfect. So I appreciated the fact that you were willing to be vulnerable like that, because I think it shows to a personal growth, which hopefully we all want to have as we mature in age. So that was part of why I like that song a lot. Um, and Thank you. And I imagine that it would mean a lot to your daughters to hear that, you know? Well, they haven't heard it yet. So they'll hear it uh, in a week or two, I think. I don't know exactly when the uh, the release date is. It, it, it is a single. Uh, two of the songs that you mentioned are singles. Daughters is a single. And also uh, uh, Today, Happy Today is also a single. So uh yeah, so I, I need to get I need to get my AR job, volume 10. What's up? <laughs> uh I I need to hire our AR. Are you kidding me? I think that's part of the reason why I haven't blown up yet, is because I don't have decent uh 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 um uh, 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 decent team together. And AR is definitely one of them. I need a uh, AR, I need a uh a uh, promotional person and uh, what's the what's the person that gets you interviews and all that? Oh, a publicist. A publicist. I also need that. So if you want to hold any of those jobs, you are welcome to them. All right. Well, we'll talk about that off camera. But okay. With uh, happy today. Oh, she wants you. She yeah, wants you to see the hair. And I got his hair straightened out, so he won't be looking all wild. She said she got my hair straightened out. Oh so yeah. Like, wow. We can tell. It's definitely right. Am I, am I turning into volume 10 before your eyes or what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with Happy Today, I really like the horns on there and the music being so different. And it was like these cascading waves of music. But it also seemed, uh, to your point and to the song title, of being actually happy. Um, but one of the things. I, I noted on the opposite side of the spectrum in the song was when you said two times from the ghetto, they took away from me. Are you right. referring to gentrification or are you referring to other stuff? Yes. I'm referring to gentrification. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what in this happy song, what made you want to refer to gentrification in that way? Well, um, I don't know if you noticed, but, I try to say something in every song. You know what I mean? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> there it is. I try to, uh, I try to uh, say something meaningful in every song. I don't just want to talk. You know what I mean? I think it's a waste of time. It's a waste of lyrics. It's a waste of a song at this point in my life because I have less years left than I've lived. So I don't want to say any frivolous stuff at all. And if I do, I want to stick some meaningfulness in there uh, as well. So while I was talking about being happy about seeing someone, which is a light subject, you know, I looked, I always look for opportunity to say something meaningful, something that you can take away from the song and remember it. And hold on. And you did. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yes. Well, there's lots of other stuff on there too on uh, Happy Today that I liked, which was 
one of the things that you repeated because it's part of the course is sitting with me like it's a holiday. Because I think one thing that I think we've lost a lot as a society is the ability to relax and just be in the moment and just chill. Yes, so sir. what what uh, made you think of that and to frame it in that context, like a holiday? Say that one more time. What made you think to frame it in that type of context, like a holiday and just chilling, relaxing in that way? Well, bruh, I don't know about you, but some of my favorite time is holidays. Uh, barbecues. Uh, you get to see your family. My cousin, who I love very much, Linda Williams. Um, you get to see the people that you haven't seen in, in, a, in a long time. It's some of the warmest feelings that I've had in my life were the holidays. Uh, I'm, I'm from California, but the rest of my family is from Phoenix, Arizona, and which is where I'm at right now. And so I came to visit and, you know, the, the, some of the, the best times of my life have been during the holiday season uh, with family. And I think that nothing, hardly anything else warms my heart more. And so um, while I was talking to my family members and telling them that I missed them, I also wanted to interject the time where I think most families get together. Most families are together. Most families create, you know, the, the memories. And so it just felt po poignant to put it in. And uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, and I think too, musically, that song is just very different. And I just really uh, uh, liked the approach. And of course, you got scratching at the end, which I always love. Wasn't that, and I see that was kind of my favorite part of the whole video and, and the song is when he starts scratching because it, it brings you back to the hip hop, you know what I mean? And kind of slaps you with it like, okay, now we're back to the hip hop, bam. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, cool. Cause I was wondering, you know what I mean? I could just see fans going, okay, okay. Okay, I like the song now, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that part on the, on the lake, was really good you know what i mean the visuals of the lake and the uh reflection of it with the with the flowers i just thought it was a good look shots out to uh jonah from uh from a uh, weird rap who produced most of the album uh and also filmed the video that you can see on youtube right now and edited the video he does a lot of work uh, for me. He would, he mentions to me regularly, <laughs> and so I would uh, you know I want to give him big big shot shout outs. Yes, definitely shout him out and shout out Weird Rap and Jonah. Definitely putting it down. So my son, my son did, my son did daughters, and Jonah did Happy Today, and. Um, what was the third one? The, uh, the, the truth. Truth. The truth. And, and that, and most one, that one I liked. The truth I liked for very different reasons, just because it seemed uh, one unusual, quote unquote, coming from a rapper. But the. Uh, yeah, because it was like a rock and roll track, right? Yeah, but it was like the, a different way to look at things like seeing the aching of people when they're dead, just like looking at right. things from a different perspective that's more of a spiritual thing or more of a deeper consciousness, however you want to describe it. So is that something that you've had for a long time or is that a newer thing that you've started doing uh, mentally? What, what do you mean? As far as like how you think about those things, like viewing people, seeing the ache in people when they're dead, like that's an unusual thought, I think. Again, so that line to me does not sit well in a rap. You feel me? And it's like some Ozzy Osbourne type of, you know, lyric. It's really uh, macabre, right? 
And, you know, I, I don't, what, I can't seem to write very well in that way for rap. And to get that deep, I feel like it has to be on some singing, rock and roll, alternative type of, of, uh, of canvas for me to write that type of stuff. Um, I couldn't wait to do this type of music. And it never came to me. That The producer never came to me. You know what I mean? And um, the beats are old, not old, I'm not gonna say they're older, but they were passed over by other MCs who I guess thought were, they thought it, they were too weird or something, you know what I mean? And they couldn't do anything with them. Listen, I'm not a rapper. I'm not a rapper. Everybody would like to think I'm a rapper. I'm not a rapper. I'm an artist. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a hip hopper. I'm an artist. And I've always felt like I was an artist and just hip hop was where I could do it readily. You know, it was readily available for me. Um, but I've always wanted to be um, stranger than that. You know what I mean? And I think alternative music allows me to do it. Hmm. Okay. Because just hearing these different things, the other song that was as dramatic in that regard to me was The Night Creep. Right. Uh, right. That one sounded more like some horrorcore rap, but in uh, presented in a very different way. <laughs> it did. So because I was already in that mode, right, I was able to do that song, uh, Night Creep, uh, which is, I guess it's more hip hop than, than the rest of the album. Yes. Except maybe Daughters. And uh, Jonah, who by song three or four was fiending for some hip hop, right? And he basically just gave me an earful of, what are you doing with all this soft stuff, bro? I'm getting sick of it. You better give me some real hip hop in here real quick now. <laughs> so um, Night Creep was invented. <laughs> And um, it's, it is his favorite song on the album. Um, he also produced that song as well. He did every song on the album except Daughters. And I have a song called France that Jism High Definition did. So it's really mainly Jonah's album. You know what I mean? So when he went to crying like a big old baby, I, 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 gave, him, I gave him what he wanted, which was Night Creek. So, yeah. Um, I love it. Listen, I, 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 don't, I don't think you caught it, but I'm going to say it again. I always wanted to be Ozzy Osbourne, bro. I'm sorry. Those facial expressions that I do, I got them from Ozzy, man. <laughs> he was one of the influencers of that. You know what, what I mean? <laughs> what, what, uh, what drew you to Ozzy Osbourne? His theatrics on stage bro have you ever seen him live no oh my god you have not seen anything until you saw see ozzy in his prime on stage bro are you young or something i guess <laughs> i guess i'm a couple years younger than you but i didn't listen to that much rock music i listen to pretty much just rap and go-go so okay i didn't listen to no go-go <laughs> And I listened to a lot of rock, bro, because um, it was in the house. You know what I mean? The, the, the 70s, 60s. I mean, that's part of um, my sisters and brothers um, generation, you know, so I was always exposed to music before I got to hip hop. Um, Ozzy, bro, I just saw Ozzy live one day. And it was the craziest thing that I ever seen. I mean, you know, I'm pretty dramatic on stage and I've left a lot of people with the deer in the headlights look, you know what I mean? And when I first saw Ozzy, my mouth was wide open, bro. I couldn't believe 
that someone was that wicked, I guess is the, is the, is the I was like, oh my God, he's saying that. Never seen any performer this evil, right? <laughs> Which is what he wanted you to believe, right? But then after I realized, man's not evil, you know, he's just, he's being a character, you know? And, and I dug it. So yeah, he did these crazy facial expressions that no one on the planet ever did. And him, plus a couple of other guys like that, um, let the waves go by. You know that song? Let the days go by, right? Him and Ozzy, like, are the most responsible for my stage performance. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, Ozzy. And let me tell you, Ozzy, I love you, man. <laughs> so what, what year approximately did you see him and where was it? I have no idea. Don't even ask me that. I saw him on TV. Oh, it was on TV. Okay. It was on TV, some concert. Maybe it was on cable or something. Maybe I saw like clips from uh, television or something, you know? I don't really know exactly where it was. I wish I could see him live in his prime, especially. That would have been great. Well, now you make me want to go dig through YouTube and find him. So. Oh, you got to go check out Ozzy, bro. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Hmm. Okay. Now, with Night Creep, one of the other things was rapping about the ghouls and goblins and Bilbo Baggins and all this stuff. So mentally, what was it like kind of incorporating that into a song, into lyrics, into the story that you tell on Night Creep? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's sort of like acting. Um, I, uh, remember the movie with Death, uh, David Ruffin? What was it Temptations? Yes. And there was a scene in there where... Uh, close your mouth. Hold on. She said, I got to close my mouth. Hold on. For Night Creep, what was it like, though, taking the persona or writing from the perspective of the monster, the goblins, the ghouls, and Bil mentioning Bilbo Baggins? So, so I saw the actor who played David Ruffin do an interview, and he said the line, this line right here, uh, ain't nobody come to see you, Otis, right, was not in the script and actually came up in rehearsals because he said that he had been David Ruffin all month <laughs> and that, you know, he took on the persona of David Ruffin. He was actually him. You know what I mean? So I think, uh, I think you're asking me, how do I get in that, in that mode? I just basically uh, get into an acting kind of a vibe where I become the person that I'm, that I'm writing or, or the character that I'm that I'm portraying in the video, you know what I mean? And I, um, I'm, I'm a little weird, right? I'm strange, so I can kind of hold on for a minute. So I, I basically become I, I, I became Bilbo Baggins. Baggins. In, in it, I became precious. I became precious. You feel me? And I, I, I don't know if you can remember, but there was like three or four different characters in the song. You know what I mean? And I was all of them, right? So I just, I kind of just imagine what Bilbo Boggins was going through and who he was as precious, you know what I mean? As that character. And I was him uh, for a couple of days, you know what I mean? And that as an artist, that's kind of how I get the, the, the look of an actor, 
on paper and then on audio. You know what I mean? Like I become that person, you know? And it works for me, you know? I, I, I don't know if I should be telling all these secrets, man, but you know, I'm getting older. I ain't gonna be here but for another 50 years or so. So I might as well give up the information now. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. Now with <laughs> With France also on volume 10 is Dino Hawkins or Dean Hawkins. I liked the aspirational sense of it, of having something to aspire to. Like, this is what we're going to do when we make it or when our relationship gets better, when we have more money, when we have these things. So what, given that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Excuse me, feet. Excuse me, broom. Okay, go for it. Hold on. Excuse her feet. Excuse her broom. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. This, this lady right here, I'm gonna tell her a story. So my grandmother, her grandmother, that's, you know, that's my cousin, right? Mm -hmm. So I was sweeping her kitchen and she said to me, did you just sweep your feet? And I said, yeah, I swept my feet. And she said, you're gonna go to jail, Dino. You just swept your feet. I will tell you three days later, I was in jail for drinking a beer in public. As a teenager, I was 16 years old. You swept, you swept my feet. Uh, we have some type of, uh, what do you call that? When you're uh, superstition about people sweeping our feet. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Our, our grandmother gave, please don't sweep people's feet again like that. Okay. People don't like that. Okay. okay. But I love you. Okay. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done. Uh, yeah. I get it. Yeah, that's why I didn't it's that. just some cultural stuff, and we just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I'm just teaching you some you stuff. Know. You're fine. You're okay for it. <laughs> Man, you need to keep that. You're going to keep it? <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness, my life. I'm getting my cousin out of my chair. I'm done. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. She, she's she's right. almost. Wait, no, we're not done. We're not done. Oh, we're not done. I thought no. you had to go. Okay. No, I'm almost out of her chair. I think it's great. What do you think? I think Dean is back. Look at him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's do it. Let's finish it up. Yes. So wrapping it up with one other song was France. I liked how it had an aspirational element to it because so much of rap as we know is celebrating already having everything but right. but france had the element of this is what we're going to do when we're in a better place financially this is what we're going to do with these types of things uh what made you want to approach a song from that perspective well i don't like lying uh when i'm writing i don't have all that stuff uh, i wish i did i wish i could take my wife to france she deserves it, you know what I mean? But I can't. Um, I just didn't want to be a perpetrator like all these other rappers talking about all the stuff they got and they ain't got it, you know what I mean? And I've done it, but it's not really where I want to be. So for the most part, I want to stay away from that stuff, you know what I mean? Talking about the stuff I ain't got or even bragging about the stuff that I have, you know what I mean? Um, it's, you know. I just feel like it was some younger stuff. It's younger man game, you know, younger man rap. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, I wanted to be able to say some of the same stuff that they say and talk about Prada and, you know, all this other stuff. But I wanted to do it in a way that was truthful to who I am. You know what I mean? So I think the music always is better when there's a ring of truth in it, people ain't stupid. They can hear your bullshit, you know what I mean? And if they can't hear it, uh, you know, uh, they can see it. And I just, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. So yeah, and um, it actually uh, is one of my favorite songs because I was able to, uh, I have my wife on it, but I was able to basically um, 
I'm on some new stuff. I, I, I want to materialize my wealth now. I want to I want to speak on my wealth. My new label that I'm sign I sign myself to my label now. I'm not on anyone's label. Uh, I named it uh, Money Making Records, and it's just because I want to speak into existence the things that I want. You know, I've uh, I've been a hip hopper. I've been doing music. I've been a rapper for a lot of years, and uh, some of those years I actually had money. <laughs> okay, but for the most part in my life, I would like to think. Well, I don't know if I like to think it. I mean, it's just the truth. I've been like a poor, righteous teacher. You know, I've I've, I've always uh, tried to relay any information to my listeners that I thought was valuable. And uh, so, but, but, you know, and now, and now I want to relay the fact that it's time for me to get paid. You know, it's time for me to get paid so I can, so I can, um, uh, like, you know, make my legacy concrete because it seems as if, you know, fans, people held the history books. They don't want to remember the poor ones. They don't want to remember them. They don't bring them up. Uh, when I, when I watch, um, uh, social media or, or I watch uh, anything having to do, you know, documentaries or whatever it is, whenever they're giving a music person their flowers, they hardly ever give it to the poor ones. It's always the way, especially in hip hop, it's the ones that are rich that are getting all the no notoriety, all the hub. When I see um, who, are, who is the top 100 rappers on the planet, I don't see a broke one in the fucking list. You know what I mean? So I just want to talk up my 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 legacy, my money. I want to I want to talk that up. I want to be able to take care of my family, my friends, um, which I wasn't able to do in my first go round with music because, which was uh, my first go around with music, which was 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 very uh, unfortunate because. Uh, my 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 money part of this game uh, didn't last very long. <laughs> you know what I mean? My the money part. You know I'm famous, but who wants to be famous and struggling, or famous and not be rich? You know it's famous, but why isn't your clothes extremely uh, new? You know what I mean? Uh, why does your shoes have a buff on them? Uh, I mean a scar. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, a mark on them. You're supposed to be rich. You're one of the dopest rappers on the planet, Ken. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's that's where, where France came from, the wish of wanting to have money. Because I I you know they say they say uh, they say money makes you more of who you really are then I'm 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 a, I'm a little bit happy that I that I wasn't rich as a child, as a young person. You know what I mean? Because I don't really, in my heart, I don't really think I would have turned out as, as well as I am, uh, you know, as well, as good of, as a, of a person, you know, if I had all that money. And, and why is that? Well, I was a knucklehead as a child, as a young adult, uh, as is, uh, most people, I think. And you know, I was doing a lot of rock and roll type of things. Um, not having, you know, when you when you have a lot of money, you have unlimited access. And I don't think that's good for people who are young and dumb and don't know anything and haven't had any experiences in life. You know what I mean? To 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 throw stardom and money upon a 19 year old, which is how old I was when I got my record deal, uh, it's scary, it's scary. And there's a lot of people, a lot of friends who are not here anymore because they lived that fast life. Um, and I, I was happy to miss most of that. 
by being a poor righteous teacher, a, a poor hip hopper, and not a rich uh, a man that might have lost his mind behind his access to whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, at at this age, um, I've learned who I am. There is no one or nothing on the planet can change my route, you know, of who I am and what I'm willing to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not willing to be a drug addict. I'm not willing to be a street person anymore, you know, uh, homeless. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not willing to uh, give um, who I am right now away am i getting off the subject <laughs> no no you, that's you're breaking it down so yeah i don't want to i don't want to lie about anything in raps uh i want to uh speak on what on how i want it to be as opposed to lying about it and i hope people can uh can feel the realness in it all you know what i mean the that feel the the genuineness of my writings, um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not here to hide very much as a writer. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, and I'm glad you like that song too because it's one of those songs that I was not sure about. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there you go. I'm glad you liked it. What well, weren't you sure about, uh, France? I wasn't quite sure about my delivery on it. Like, I'm not a singer, right? So I was, you know, did I sing well enough for this song? You know what I mean? Listen, one of the reasons why I'm singing is because I want to write for other people. And, you know, there's a, there's a uh, debate on whether or not R&B is dead, right? Like someone said, Puffy said R&B was dead or something. And so it got a, it got a Neo a hot <laughs> or something. And he Neo got on and started talking some shit. I didn't read it, but I can only imagine, uh, you know, r and not dead. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, part of it also is fighting against them killing real music. You know what I mean? But, uh, so yeah, I wasn't sure about the the the, the, the delivery on it, uh, but but again, um, I want to write for other people, and um, I want to write songs, not just raps. And I'm surprised that uh, no one has ever asked me to to write a song for them. No one. Whereas I see uh, comparable people, Mike and I for example, um, he was writing for people when we were teenagers, uh, people that had record deals. You know, I guess maybe part of it was people didn't know whether or not they, whether or not I could write in their style. Because if you look at volume 10 and you go, volume 10 writing for me, I can't do that fucking crazy ass shit volume does. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially in the beginning, my style, they, they said it was whack. A lot of people didn't like it. You know, a lot of people, they're ants, bro. They don't, anything new, they want to throw thumbs down on it. You know, and, and this is supposed to be music. You, you, you people are supposed to love the new stuff. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so, okay, back to the question. What was the, what was the question again? Your uncertainty what, about France. Yeah, you know, the delivery. But I'm, like I said, I'm glad you like it. It makes me feel like perhaps there is going to be some room in music for me to do this type of music. I wasn't sure about it. You know, I wasn't sure if people were going to be able to dig it. Um, Jonah, although he respects the album, also was worried about people, um, you know, my fans liking it and was wondering how people were, was going to feel about it. Uh, you said something when you talked to me on the phone a couple of days ago. You said that I told you that it wasn't hardcore hip hop, that it was some singing. 
and that you went into it with that in mind. And so you, I think you were saying that you were able to appreciate it a little bit better than if you didn't know and you assume you were going to get a volume 10 album and then you got this, you know what I mean? So I'm, ha I'm glad you like it. I hope other people like it, uh, the album. Um, I want to, I want to say a song. Um, um, I have a song called Freedom Fighter on the album, right? And it's a punk song. And, you know, I'm listening to Jonah's, um, sorry, the flies are attacking me. I was listening to Jonah's music and I ran across that punk song. Now, you know why it was left there unused is because hardly any rappers want to do any punk songs. So nobody used it. But when I came across it, listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. I was not a punk fan at all. I didn't like punk basically because I didn't like the culture of the, of the, of the scene. Right. I didn't like the painted nails, you know what I mean? With the fucking, uh, you know, metal in your nose, uh, with the, you know, Gothic clothes and the spiked hairs with the big giant ass boots and shit. You know what I mean? Like, the whole scene to a hip hardcore hip hop dude from the good life, <laughs> that shit looked ridiculous to me. I never really uh, listened to the music, nor did I ever investigate the culture because just from the outside, it didn't look right to me. In talking to Jonah about the track, uh, he suggested that I listen to some other people, right? And then I became a fan because I realized, how you doing? All right. I realized that, uh, shit, what was I saying? <laughs> um, you were saying about listening to other oh, types yeah, of- Oh, yeah, that I realized that, that the lyrical content that the music had was freedom fighter music. You know what I mean? It's anti-establishment music, uh, which it didn't really come across to me as, at that when I was younger. So after I listened to it, I, I became an instant fan of punk. Um, I instantly realized that, that, um, the, that, you know, you can't judge a book by the look, right? Now I'm black. I already know that, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we, our hair is crazy. We do whatever we want with our hair. When, I'm sorry to say this, but when white folks saw that hair, they went, he's homeless. When black folk seen it, they notice it. They, they don't, they didn't, you know, they, we look at, we don't even look at how you dress black folk. If you want to know, if we want to know if someone's homeless, we smell them. <laughs> That's how you know someone is homeless from the black culture, right? But anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of uh, rambling a little bit, I think. But uh, so, yeah, I, 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 yeah. But I think so, it, it all ties in because freedom, like I liked how you said, I need freedom fighters, but then you also were like, I need my freedom fighters. Like it was two different uh, breakdowns of it, which I appreciated. And that to me kind of goes hand in hand with the whole project, volume 10 is Dean Hawkins. It's these two worlds colliding which is what people know as volume 10 and then all of these other things that you are as dean hawkins so there you go i appreciate that yeah appreciate it. so uh anything else before we before we bounce um uh, nah man this is a good time to end because i am really really hungry um i'm about to go find me something to eat over here subway over here uh i also wanted to say in the video you know, I'm about 300 pounds in that video. Uh, I'm probably about 15 to 20 pounds down from that. Congratulations. So, yeah, so uh, I had a hospital scare or two. <laughs> so uh, for some reason, Black people have problems with their gallbladders. Probably because we eat a lot of greasy foods, fried foods. And 
So I believe that is what happened. I have a little something going on with my gallbladder. Uh, and and I didn't know what it was. So when I went to the doctor, I thought it was cancer, you know? And he looked, he was like, nah, it's not cancer. You don't have any cancer. It's probably your gallbladder. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to take some more tests to see about it. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, so I had that scare and, and I've, basically tried to cut away all fatty foods. Um, so I see a subway across the street. I'm going to go over there and eat me a tuna sandwich. <laughs> I don't even want to say the word, bro. I'm going to eat a tuna sandwich. I've replaced my hamburgers and fries with tuna sandwiches. So there you go. Um, well, so they say health is wealth and it, that's for real. Yes, sir. I'm trying to hit 80. Soren, thanks for the interview, bro. Yes, uh, always a pleasure, man. When I get some new stuff, uh, hit my uh, hit my uh, my my Facebook at Dino Dwayne Hawkins. Hit my Instagram at uh, uh, Dino Volume Ten Hawkins. Uh, I believe my Twitter is Volume Ten. Uh, I need my numbers to go up. You know, I have pretty good, I'm getting pretty good numbers at, um, uh, at the, uh, at, uh, uh, the, uh, streaming, but my numbers are really low on my social media. So when people come to try to per patronize with me, they go, Oh, well, your numbers are low on your social media. So they want to pass me up. Like I'm not important to music. I have to tell them, look, go look at my numbers. You know what I mean? at uh at on the streaming i'm streaming so please go to my instagram my facebook please follow me and uh yeah follow follow my man oh and go to my cousin's shop she is at great clips i believe this is uh this is glendale arizona and uh what is it should i get i'm not gonna get the address <laughs> i probably shouldn't give the address Okay, I think she might have went to lunch. Anyway, so I'm out of here, man. Good looking out, bro. Appreciate it as always, man. Have a good one. Peace. Peace. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, five on your MTV basketball? Your MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.